Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Nobody likes it when people are trashing the street. In our first story, OP taught the hooligan a lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Dumping your trash on the ground? You look thirsty. So I'm in the drive-thru at my favorite fast food spot, getting some cheese sticks. Long line, but that's cool because I'm just chilling. Dude in front of me in a lifted truck drops his sig butts and empty pack on the ground. What the heck? My town ain't your trash can. I get out, pick it up, and toss it into the bed of his truck and give him a cheeky thumbs up. He pulls up, gets his beef and cheddars, then he gets out, climbs into the bed of his truck, and throws it back on the ground towards me and flips me off. I get my food and see he's waiting for me by the road with his window down. I throw my whole 32-ounce Coke into his open window from my car in a shot that would have made Kobe proud. I let it rip and peeled out of the parking lot with him chasing me down the highway. I put the hammer down and took off of my little coupe and left him in the dust. I got home after making sure he wasn't still tailing me and had the most satisfying glass of tap water I've ever had in my life. And our next story. Abusive boss accidentally picks on his own boss and pays the ultimate price. It was just months before the financial crisis and I was working for the tech department in a very large company. It was quite a large department in which we handled electronics. That department stood out from most of the company as it was receiving a bit of different treatment. The company thought if they create an extremely pleasant working environment there, they could get away with paying those stationed there with considerably less wages than they could be eligible for. And it was also a meritocracy. Your rank and station was based on what you were capable of, not how long you were in the company. I say that because just after two years, I was running the whole department. The reason for that was that because aside from being a computer technician, I also had skills in electrotechnics, electronics, programming, and online advertising, which the company realized and put me in charge of the whole bunch. However, before you question the validity of this story, you should know that while I had the rank, I made only marginally more money than the rest of the department. The only plus was the rank, and that I had half the working hours of the rest of the department. My only job was to make sure that everybody was at their best while doing their job and paperwork, along with comms and coordinating with the rest of the company. I felt it was important that you knew the entire story because now I want to introduce you to Dick. Fake name. Dick was a hard worker, but a sick, evil, miserable B-turd who was at the company for over six years, but couldn't get any higher up the ladder other than shift supervisor for the machinery boys because all he knew how to do. He was two ranks below me. Dick was an utter dick. He constantly picked on his subordinates, berating them, yelling at them, picking on the coffee boy. It was the rookie. Bringing coffee was an initiation ritual. Essentially, Dick being in charge of you was a very unpleasant experience. At the time, I didn't know this was going on. Dick was not in the group I ascended over, and I dealt with that group over his superior. I didn't know what was going on because I had my hands full with running the whole thing from an office halfway across the company building. Big building. Before we continue, you should know that my country has a law against workplace abuse called bossing in which, if there's been some emotional harm inflicted, the person who performed bossing could even face jail time, and the company in question could pay massive fines. To continue, suddenly I received an email from my superior telling me there was an incident regarding Dick and that I've been scheduled for a disciplinary action. Apparently there was a coffee girl in his group, which he utterly destroyed to the point where she had a nervous breakdown, and as a department administrator, I received huge flack for not sustaining a pleasant working environment, which was a department policy so that people wouldn't complain so much about the subpar pay they're getting. Dick got me in so much trouble that I had to spend a week of constant damage control with my own superior. In the end, I was ordered to take appropriate action against Dick to prove that I was still the man for the job. Dick got me in a lot of trouble. Dick was going to pay. There was just one problem. There was no evidence against Dick, so I was going to have to be sneaky. I send a message to Dick's superior, notifying him that they will be getting a replacement coffee boy from another group tomorrow. Me. 
I was going undercover to stick it to Dick. There's a saying. You see a guy in a suit and tie and you think he's successful until you realize he's working for a man in jeans and a polo shirt. This holds true as Dick is a suit and tie guy while I wear jeans and a polo shirt to work. It's the day of revenge. I take no special preparations other than a hidden recording device and I even wear the aforementioned outfit. I arrive at work and ask two security guards to go with me to wait just outside Dick's work area. I purposely wait until I'm five minutes late, then enter the work area with Dick's people, greet everyone, and go straight for the coffee pot. Dick notices my tardiness and starts ranting. Coffee boy, what the hell do you think you're doing? Come late on your first day. Get your butt moving and serve everybody. Yes, sir. I serve coffee to everybody, but one of the techs recognizes me. I pour some coffee in his pot and tell him to say nothing because I'm recording Dick. At that time, Dick was across the room insulting another employee for misplacing his tools. After I finish serving coffee, I go to my workplace and start working. I intentionally fumble at my work as a rookie would in order to get Dick's attention. It works, and Dick notices me and races right towards me. What the hell do you think you're doing, boy? What is this mess you made? You're completely useless. I cannot use you for anything. I should send you to mop the floors, and you'll even screw that up. I turn towards Dick, put my hands at my hips, and lean forward, going in Dick's face. Dick presses his second and third finger against his thumb and starts to wave it in my face. Don't you get uppity on me, boy. I'm your boss. I know the administrator, and I can get your butt on the street in five minutes. You want to go home? Answer me. I am the administrator. Security! Both guards arrive, going into full bad butt mode, grabbing hold of their mace pockets with one hand and fists clenched in the other. I swear, Dick immediately dropped a couple of spoonfuls into his pants. Guard. Yes, Mr. O.P.? Me. Escort Mr. Dick to my office immediately for... I lean right into his face. Severe disciplinary action. Guard. Mr. Dick, come with us. Later in my office, Dick was sat down and listened to the audio recording of the incident, as well as I made him read out loud an extract of the labor law concerning bossing. Then I go full cold turkey on his butt. Me. Mr. Dick, you've been caught severely abusing your employees, which is not only against department policy, but is also a criminal offense, punishable by jail time in certain circumstances. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Sweating, shaking, stuttering, Dick says, I would, but I'm, but I'm me. It's what I thought. Let me tell you what's going to happen. I have enough evidence to pin the breakdown of Coffee Girl on you, which means that I have the power to send you to jail. Not sure if true, I was bluffing. So your disciplinary action is going to be as follows. Firstly, you were to be demoted for at least a period of two months. Your previous group was lacking a coffee boy. I think you would be perfect for the job. Secondly, you're going to love it. Thirdly, you're going to send flowers and a letter of apology to the girl you broke down. But if you, number one, try to quit within the time allotted for your punishment, and number two, so much as look at your former subordinates in a way they wouldn't like, and number three, not do your work with utmost distinction, I will send this evidence to the authorities and use every scrap of power I have in this company to send you to jail so bad that when you come out of it, you'll be wearing diapers for the rest of your life. Have I made myself clear? Utterly pale and defeated, Dick says, Yes, Mr. O.P. To add insult to injury, I inform his group of Dick's demotion. I told them that he has absolutely no authority over them anymore and that he's going to serve them coffee until a time I see fit to rejoin them, but only as a serviceman equal in rank to the group. Dick was also forced to clean out his office in front of the group as the coffee boy wasn't even entitled to his own cubicle, let alone a desk. And our last story. Boss tells me I'm not a manager, so I stopped doing her job. For background, I work in mental health and substance use services. I've worked in my job for a long time now. My boss is never available for help and hardly on site. Recently, she got a new manager who's not impressed with her work ethic, but then lockdown happened and he had to shield. She's gone straight back to her old ways. Boss will often ask me to do her work for her to save her coming in, which I've never minded doing until recently. 
I had a meeting with my boss after an incident at work where someone tried to assault me. I told my boss I didn't feel supported by her after it happened as she wasn't present and didn't manage it well afterwards. In the middle of the meeting, boss says perhaps you want to consider some easier work in a different department. Me. What? Why? Boss. Well, you do take on a lot of extra work that you don't need to. A lot of this work is a manager's job. Maybe you need to learn to say no to taking on all this work. I asked if there was something wrong with my standard of work, if she had concerns, etc., and she says no. Three months down the line, four of the team leave, and they get new people in. Boss. Oh, OP, can you induct new starters on their first day? Me. Sorry, boss, that's a manager's job. Boss. Can you complete fire risk assessment? Me. Sorry, boss, that's a manager's job. After a while, she stops asking me things. Then one day, she's working from home. I'm pretty sure she's been telling her manager she's on site throughout lockdown, but mostly isn't. Huge incident kicks off with residents, emergency services are called, etc. I call boss and explain to her what happened. Boss. OP, can you please do the following with commissioning body, staff, and residents involved, and write the report, send it all directly to me, please. Me. Sorry, boss, you'll need to come in to manage this. I'm not a manager, that's not my job. Boss. Just this once, please? I refused to manage the incident. Turned out she was visiting a friend who lived at the coast while she was meant to be on site. Someone accidentally let it slip to her manager when he called in the incident, and there was no one to manage. He asked me to deal with the incident. I explained I couldn't and that the boss had reported me as taking on too much work. A full investigation has been launched into her conduct and ability to do her job. Manager now talks to me directly and supervises me. He's helping me apply for a promotion. Boss is on leave pending investigation. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.